Homes made in factories were supposed to save us from the housing crisis. Modular builders made lofty promises to build homes quickly, sustainably, and efficiently while being budget friendly. However, we've seen numerous prefab, offsite, and modular builders file for bankruptcy recently, like Katera, Vive, and Modulus. In theory, modular construction is a no brainer. So, why are so many of these firms failing? In this video, we're going to analyze several of these companies and identify key factors contributing to their downfall. We'll also explore how other companies have adopted unique strategies to steer clear of bankruptcy. Of all the modular construction companies that have failed in recent years, Katera is arguably the most infamous. They took a vertically integrated, full-service approach to create prefabricated structures at a large scale. Before their demise in 2021, Katera had raised more than $2 billion, a majority from Japanese conglomerate SoftBank. A while ago, I made a video exploring Katera's rise and downfall, comparing its trajectory to WeWork. Soon after the video went live, I received a message on Instagram from someone claiming to be Katera's founder and CEO. This person insisted that I got the facts wrong, but he admired my chutzpah in being so certain that I had it right. He added that the story is nowhere near over. I have no way of knowing if that was the real founder, but the timing and specificity of the message was very peculiar. To be clear, I spoke to numerous Katera employees before making that video to confirm the facts. In an interesting turn of events, the former CEO of Katera has started another modular construction company under the radar called Onyx Homes. In 2023, Onyx raised around $200 million and built over 500 homes in Florida. Instead of using wood or CMU, they are building homes with precast concrete. They have some pretty ambitious goals for the future, like 100% LEED certification, EV charging stations, 80% recyclable material, and carbon neutral homes. While there are a lot of similarities between Katera and Onyx Homes, these new concrete homes are priced on the higher end at $200 per square foot. Leave me a comment below if you'd like me to dive into this stealth startup to find out more about their modular prefabricated homes. Other former employees of Katera started a UK-based firm called Modulus that claimed to be the first globally scalable solution to the housing crisis. However, in 2022, they reported a huge loss of $12 million, contrasted with a meager turnover of just $116,000. They have since laid off all their employees and gone into liquidation. Another failed modular business in the UK is House by Urban Splash. They sought to be the first home builder to offer a virtual home configurator. Buyers could customize floor plans, finishes, and layouts. Unfortunately, the business collapsed in 2022 due to underperformance of its factory, excessive losses, design issues, and production defects. Modular construction firms in Finland have also been struggling. Subsidiaries of the real estate developer Leto Group declared bankruptcy in 2023. Leto developed industrialized building concepts and had its own production facilities. According to insiders, the company did not sustainably manage its aggressive expansion. They also took on complex construction projects like shopping centers, where they lacked experience. Most recently, Vive, a real estate developer turned home builder, shut down its operations only a year after reaching unicorn status or a billion dollar valuation. Like the other firms we discussed, they had grand ambitions to build high quality plug and play homes faster, smarter, and more sustainably. They claim to cut down carbon emissions by 54% through a new proprietary closed wall system. Ultimately, they ran out of money, couldn't make payments on property acquisitions, and couldn't raise more capital. This string of failed businesses is disheartening for everyone involved, from the employees who were laid off to the investors. It also affects the broader perception and trust in modular construction technologies. Over the past two years, I've talked to many modular firms that have taken a cautious and financially responsible approach. 
I'm concerned that reckless businesses will have a negative effect on those that are trying to do it the right way. So understanding why these failures keep happening is crucial. There are numerous reasons that contributed to their downfall, but I've narrowed them down to five. The first is inexperience. Unlike a phone or a car that can be used anywhere in the world with relatively small tweaks, construction varies significantly from country to country and even state to state. The sector is a harsh environment for innovation. Outsiders from the tech field who are unaware of the complexities of construction come in with ambitious plans to disrupt it, but with little of the expertise needed to fill a niche in the market. This inexperience and arrogance lays the foundation for a company's demise. The second is decentralization. Construction is highly fragmented with numerous stakeholders involved in every project. This can make it difficult to implement new technologies that meet the needs of every company, supplier, and type of construction. This makes it difficult to introduce changes and even to raise capital. Construction managers outsource much of the work and subcontractors generally don't have the capital. The third is long-term investment. Many of the failed modular companies we reviewed raised money by using pre-order numbers and hypothetical projects that could be built five to seven years down the line. They use that money to invest heavily in automation and robotics. Now in reality, real estate developers are not obligated to fulfill those orders. As soon as banks hiked up interest rates, materials got a lot more expensive and projects were cancelled. So machines sat idle in factories, the modular firms couldn't raise more money to keep their operations running, and they couldn't pay back their investors. The fourth is restrictive codes. Government regulations, zoning laws and building codes often stand in the way of more factory-made homes. Construction companies operate on razor-thin profit margins, especially when you account for the cost of operating expensive automation lines in a factory. In order for a modular factory to be profitable, they have to scale up production and operate close to max capacity. The complex web of local and state regulations can make it impossible to reach those economies of scale. The last reason is the uniqueness of projects. This ties back to the first point. Building developers and homeowners take pride in the buildings they invest in. They want to put their unique thumbprint on it so it differs from the buildings around it. Not all modular companies respect this. I spoke to a company last year that was rude and dismissive of the work of architects and interior designers. They believe that changing paint colors and lighting would appease designers. Now that is arrogance. A successful modular construction project is one that balances a logical, repetitive kit of parts with beauty and uniqueness both on the exterior and the interior. Again, buildings are not phones or cars. Before we move on to a really cool modular company that is taking a different approach to construction, I'd like to introduce the Institute for Architectural Science and Technology, the sponsor of this portion of the video. The specialized knowledge in facade engineering and building physics is hard to find and is often only obtained through years of work experience. The experts in the field are very sought after. IAST is a great place to start or advance your career in facade engineering and building physics. Qualifications in facades can also help you stand out in your current role. The courses are focused on applicable practical knowledge. They are taught through comprehensive videos, tests, assignments and interactive 3D models and cover all aspects of thermal, acoustic and structural performance, fire safety, condensation, logistics and material science. Created and peer-reviewed by the leaders in facade engineering, IAST courses are designed for people who are passionate about the technical aspects of modern facades and eager to learn more. Check out the links in the description for more information on their courses. Now let's move on to BotBuilt, a small modular company in North Carolina that has a no-nonsense approach to modular construction. They buy second-hand robot arms off eBay and customize them to build modular panels. I spoke to their CEO, Brent Vedas, on my podcast to learn more about the company. So our robotic systems are off the shelf. We get them from car manufacturers. Once they're out of 0.2 millimeters of precision, the uh, BMW plant there in Spartanburg, South Carolina, th those robots are dead to them. So they've spent a couple hundred thousand on robots and they'll put on eBay for you know 10 to 30 grand 
and we can just go ahead and scoop those up because 0.3 mils of precision in my world is just fine and dandy. And so yeah. for us, it's the ability to let the robots do that. And we have a different system, a proprietary system that lets the robots plan out their path and actually through that planning, create the motions that will create the most efficient build process. And they can build those panels without humans having to sit and reprogram. The construction industry needs risk takers on both ends of the spectrum. Bot built on the more conservative side and Katera on the risky side. Bankruptcies are a painful experience for everyone involved, but those failures can be a valuable source of knowledge and improvement. Before closing out, I have to bring up Boxable, one of the biggest names in the modular construction industry right now. I recently came across their 2023 SEC filing, and I am very troubled by their numbers. If you'd like me to dive into them in a dedicated video, leave me a comment below. I'll also provide a link to my Patreon page in the description. I'm now offering early access to ad-free videos on Patreon as a thank you to everyone supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.